You know, today, uh, in 1938, Paul Daniels was born, for my generation, one of the best-known television magicians. And in, in, uh, in, on Halloween 1987, he did a trick um, which copied one done by the well-known escapologist uh, Harry Houdini, uh, in which he was uh, put in an Iron Maiden. This was a, a contraption with a grill at the back to which he was strapped very securely, hands, legs, neck, all strapped to it. Um, and then uh, we were told that this door uh, would slam shut on top of him if he didn't manage to escape. And the thing about this door was that it had horrible spikes sticking out so that it would have impaled him uh, had he not managed to escape. So there's a big build-up and it could go wrong and instructions are given to the audience as to what to do if it goes wrong and so on. And then it goes... Uh, with him securely strapped in, it goes dark, and the door, you hear the door slam shut. Uh, and then, uh, darkness, and the programme ends, and an announcer tells the audience, quietly, without panic, to leave the theatre. Uh, and so you're left with the idea that actually the trick did go wrong, and he did fail to escape, and he was dead. But of course he wasn't, uh, later he reported that he was still alive and uh, I was reminded um, in this resurrection week of those words of uh, David Jenkins the Bishop of Durham he was reported to have said um, that the resurrection was a conjuring trick with bones actually the press was being mischievous he didn't say that at all he said the exact opposite he said the resurrection was not just a conjuring trick with bones. He was making the point that uh, the resurrection was not just about that one event and it wasn't a piece of magic achieved by God in, in the most extraordinary way. It had a more powerful, more influential, more dramatic effect on the lives of, 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 of people since. And uh, I, I, I'm left as I think about the evidence for the resurrection. Um, really still, even um, after many years of, of reflection upon it, uh, 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 agnostic as to whether the accounts in the New Testament are literally historically accurate or not. There's that well-known book by Frank Morrison called Who Moved the Stone? in which he starts off trying to prove that the resurrection couldn't possibly have happened, examines all the evidence and comes up with the answer that it must have happened. There was no other way of explaining um, what the Gospels describe. But I'm, uh, I'm left n not worrying too much about the physical r facts of it. It seems to me that what happened on that day was powerful and was a demonstration in the lives of disciples who were thoroughly despondent and, and despairing. Uh, 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 something happened that completely transformed their outlook and their attitude and which gave them a courage and an energy and a power which really can't be explained in any other way than that something dramatic happened which convinced them that Jesus was no longer dead but was alive. And that's the knowledge, that's for me the most powerful thing that uh, I take away from this Easter as from every Easter, that there is uh, a power that God has to bring life out of death, that whether it's, uh, it was done in the precise way that the Gospels describe, for me, isn't really the point. The point is that in the lives of millions of people since, it's been evidence to be true that God has that power and continues to use it in our world.